Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereal in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are trying to drive off one of Prince Baccarati's atmosphere ships before it destroys a small submarine in the great sea of Planet X. We're driving him off, Hap. Yes, sir. He's cut on all rockets. But what happened to the sub? We'll take care of it later. After we chase that atmosphere ship away. Commander, they're firing at us. They want to play rough, we'll cooperate. Stand by to fire space torpedoes. We're hit! We knocked out our starboard rockets. We're out of control. Commander, we're going to crash! We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space football adventure, The Sea Monster of Planet X. Only nine days left to enter the Name the Planet contest. Space Patrollers, this is Commander Corey, reminding you that you have only nine more days to enter the Name the Planet contest and win the giant rocket clubhouse and $1,500. Only nine days left to win one of the 750 Schwinn Varsity Bicycles. But that's time enough to enter and win if you act fast. First, go to your Weatherbird shoe store. Say, let's listen in on a fellow who just arrived at his Weatherbird store. Hi, Mr. Weatherbird man. I want a coin album and entry blank for the Name of the Planet contest. <laughs> you bet, son. Here you are. And it's absolutely free. You don't have to buy a thing. Inside that free coin album are three space coins and a place to write your name for Planet X. Then, just get three more space coins from three packages of Hot Ralston. You'll find a space coin in every Hot Ralston package. Put those three coins into the empty slots you'll see in your coin album. Then, write the best name you can think of for Planet X on the entry blank and mail it to the address shown in the album. Of course, you keep the album with the six exciting space coins for your own collection. But don't delay. I want every space patroller to have the opportunity to win my rocket clubhouse and $1,500. And 750 of you are going to win Schwinn Varsity Bikes. Remember, go to your Weatherbird shoe store today. Get your free coin album and space coin. Then get three more space coins from three packages of Hot Ralston. The new Hot Ralston packages with a picture of Happy or myself on the front. And you'll be ready to send in your entry in the Name the Planet contest. Hurry, see your Weatherbird shoe dealer... And get Hot Ralston today. And now, today's exciting space patrol adventure, the sea monster of Planet X. What is the fate of Prince Baccarati? That's the question uppermost in the minds of Commander Corey and Cadet Happy as they maneuver the terrified slowly over the great sea of Planet X. In their last adventure, Buzz and Happy cornered Baccarati and Dr. Malengro in a deserted city under the sea. But the prince and his henchmen slipped into an escape hatch and shot toward the surface in some sort of sealed capsule. Now, as their spaceship circles over the approximate location of the engulfed city, Buzz and Happy watch the viewscopes for a sign of the strange cylinder containing the two men. There's not a thing on the surface, Commander. By the way, that capsule shot out of that tube down there in the city. I thought sure it'd be bobbing on top of the sea like a cork. A lot of things could have happened since then, Happy. It took us at least an hour to get back through the tunnel to the Inland Valley and then blast off. The chance that cylinder is more than just a sealed life raft. That cylinder might be able to submerge and move underwater. Like a submarine. Exactly. For all we know, it could move at tremendous speed. Well, there's no telling where Baccarati is now. He may be hundreds of miles away. Or he might be heading for shore to get back to his spaceship. He wouldn't try that, Happy. For hundreds of miles along here, the coast is lined with bluffs a thousand feet high. Even if there was a stretch of beach, there's still those enormous breakers. Yeah, waves a couple hundred feet high at least. Uh, besides, if he got ashore, Baccarati would have an overland hike of 50 miles to the valley. If Baccarati can control that cylinder, he'd probably try to get back to his castle. But that's thousands of miles from the sea. Yes, he has a few installations close to the rivers. That's right. If you reach one of those, you could get a spaceship or an atmosphere job. The mouth of the Colossus River is to the east, Happy. That's probably where Baccarati would head. Yes. If he's underwater, it'll be difficult to locate, but if he can't give up till we find him, I know for sure he'll never bother us again. 
Meantime, far from the steep bluffs that rim the coastline of the great sea, a bullet-shaped craft skims the surface of the ocean at tremendous speed. Huddled in the tiny compartment, Prince Baccarati and Dr. Malengro anxiously study the small but battling control panel and its weird symbol. Malengro, do something to stop this thing. But, Your Highness, I know nothing about this ship, or whatever it is. Remember, it was built hundreds of years ago by an ancient race here on planet X. Don't give me a lecture. Get it stopped before it carries us out clear to the middle of the great sea. I can only guess as to the function of these controls. Suppose I were to touch something that would open the hatch and let the water in, we would sink immediately. Then don't touch it. Don't touch anything until you're sure. Your Highness will be patient. I, I think I can reason it out. This indicator here seems to be a, a compass. It's logical to assume that the wheel inside the calibrated dial controls direction. Careful now, Marengo. We're changing course. See, Your Highness, I was right. This wheel controls the steering mechanism. Then head back for the shore, quickly. We don't know how much fuel we have. Excellency, I, I suggest that we proceed either up or down the coast. To approach close to the shore at this point, well, we'd be dashed against the cliffs. All right, all right. But at least let's not get out of the sight of the land. I wonder which of these controls submerges the craft. What do you want to submerge for? For it will be searching for us, you know. On the surface, we would be fairly easy to find. Yes, that's right. But be careful now. This vertical lever is going to advance it slightly. We're going under. Right to the surface again. Malengo, do you hear me? Yes, Your Highness. Don't submerge again until you know how to control this thing. Yes, Your Highness. May I point out that the only way I can learn to control it is by trial and error. Malengo, which way is the Colossus River? We're heading roughly in that direction now, sire, eastward. Go up the river to my spaceship factory. If we go ashore now, we'll have to cross hundreds of miles on foot. You are right, Excellency. The river is our best choice. Do you think we have enough power to reach the factory? I have no way of knowing, sire. We can only hope. Flying in a zigzag pattern over the surface of the great sea, Buzz and Happy work their way toward the mouth of the Colossus River. Hours go by, and still there is no sign of the bullet-shaped cylinder containing Baccarati and Malengro. I guess they must have sunk, Commander. Perhaps. But let's not underrate the people that built that undersea city, Happy. Oh, we needed some help with our search. Yes, sir, but who's going to help us? Why not Baccarati's own men? Well, when he doesn't return to his castle in a reasonable length of time, they're going to come out to Crater Valley, aren't they? I guess so. A and they must have known he was headed there. Of course. They'll find his ship. That means they'll make trouble for the natives, thinking they must have done something to the prince. We don't want that. No, sir. I've thought of a way to protect the natives and at the same time start Baccarati's men to search in the sea. Well, how, sir? They'll go back to the valley and pick up Baccarati's ship with a magnetic holding field after cutting on the space upon the stress signal in the other ship. Mm -hmm. And they'll circle back out to sea and after a time drop Baccarati's ship into the water. Great. That'll bring a flock of his ships to search for him. It should. But how are we going to get Baccarati away from his men after they find him? We've done it before, Hap. We can do it again. Elsewhere, thousands of miles away in Prince Baccarati's castle, two men listen intently to a space phone signal. That's the boss, all right, Arkin. He's in trouble. Get a fix on him, Warbin. I'm getting it. Out toward Crater Valley. And those natives must be giving him a bad time. Ah, don't be stupid. What can ignorant natives do against a spaceship in flight? That's right. Besides, he's beyond the valley. He's out toward the Great Sea. We'd better send some ships out after him. Uh -oh. He stopped sending. Maybe he's okay now. Look, Arkin. When an automatic emergency code signal cuts out, it means real trouble. He may have crashed. Let's not sit here, Gavin. I'll alert the gang at the spaceport. Wait a minute. Hold it. This may be a chance to get ourselves in real good with Baccarat. Wait a minute. I sent somebody else out to get the glory. We'll be relieved here in a few minutes. We'll get a ship and search for the boss on our own without telling anybody. Yeah. I see what you mean. But if he's really in a jam and we don't of tell him... Of course anybody. he's in a jam. A bad one. If we find him, we're heroes. Big shot. If we don't, well, nobody will be any of the wiser. How about it? How about you? We just won't log that distress call. You know, opportunity for advancement.
Now, in complete control of the strange submarine, Malengro pilots the craft toward the mouth of the Colossus River, while Prince Baccarati peers up through the transparent dome, watching for Commander Corey's spaceship. We're approaching the mouth of the river now, sire. See how the headlands are flattening up? In an emergency, we could land anywhere along the beach. All right, all right. Does this stuff have a space on it? I do not think so, sir. Wait a minute. I think I see a spaceship. Where? Over there to the right. It's coming over the horizon. Right, sir. I see it. Submerge. Submerge. But, Your Highness, I don't think it's Corey. It's approaching from over the mainland. Corey knows we're somewhere in the sea. Well, then it's one of my own ships. It must be, Excellency. I wish there was some way to signal him. This sub is so small he might not see us. I'll increase our speed, sir. Zigzag over the water. The white foam of our wake will be visible for miles. All right, do it then. It is one of my ships. I can tell now. I picked up something in the view scope, Commander. The moving object on a heading of 147 degrees, now 23 degrees low. It's headed right to the spot where we dropped Dr. Roddy's ship in the sea. It's an atmosphere ship, sir. If you hold this altitude, Happy. Yes, sir. Bob, there's only one ship. I expected 10 or 20. Yeah, with a big force in distress, I figured every ship on planet X would turn out. Possibly more will show up later. Our main job now is to keep from being detected. Marcus, bring your scanners up to full sensitivity. We're near the spot where the boss's signal cut out. Looks bad, water. It's out over the great sea. Yeah. No sign of a wrecked ship. Probably sank. Dr. Riley still might have made sure. If he was lucky. I'd hate to take my chances with some of the things that are supposed to be in these waters. They said it. You know, I hear there's a giant jellyfish. Wait. Wait. That down there on the water. The white street. Well, let me adjust that view scope. Cut our velocity, will you? Sure, sure, sure. Some sort of surface. Uh, Shaped like a projectile. Look at it. Oh. What's it zigzagging like that for? Face of tactics. They want to make themselves a tough target. Where'd it come from? Anything like it before you on planet X. Probably some new space patrol gadget. <laughs> now we know what happened to Baccarati. Yeah. They blasted him out of the sky. You better get away from there or we'll be next. He's maneuvering down there. I'd say he was afraid of it. Let's blast him with a space torpedo. It's going to be tough to hit. Yeah. But it'll look good if Baccarati's ashore watching us. All right, hold this heading, Arkett. I'm going to cut loose. Let's get away from here before he fires back. No, wait. Let's make another pass. Maybe he used up all his ammunition on the board of the ship. Commander, that ship's firing at something down there in the water. I saw the explosion, Happy. Adjust the view scope. Right. Smoke and rockets. There's a small surface craft down there, sir. That's what we've been looking for. Baccarati. But why are his own men firing at him? They have no way of knowing it's Baccarati. They aren't taking any chances. That atmosphere ship's coming back for another pass, sir. Got to drive him off, Hap. I'm going to take Baccarati alive. Jesus. He's cut on all rockets. Let's be fast him till we run him off. Yes, sir. We'll chase that atmosphere ship way out to sea. Commander, they're firing at us. They want to play rough. You'll cooperate. Stand by to fire space. Commander, we're hit. Stock out of starboard rockets. We're out of control. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Space Patrollers, this is Carol. I want to tell you about the 750 beautiful Schwinn Varsity Bicycles that 750 lucky Space Patrollers are going to win in the Name the Planet contest. They're big, husky beauties. Schwinn, the best bike made. The three-speed gear shift, two-wheel yeah. handbrakes, and all the other famous Schwinn features. And you can win a Schwinn. But there's not much time. Go to your Weatherbird shoe store right away. If you don't know where the nearest Weatherbird shoe store is, you can find out in the yellow pages of your telephone book. So don't wait. See your Weatherbird shoe dealer and get going now on the Name the Planet contest. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, the sea monster of Planet X. Unable to locate the small, submersible craft by which Baccarati and Dr. Malengro escaped from the undersea city, Buzz devised the plan to lure Baccarati's own men to aid in the search. 
After turning down the emergency space phone signal in Baccarati's deserted spaceship, Buzz and Happy lifted the ship by magnetic force field and then dropped it into the great sea. Two of Baccarati's men picked up the signal of the castle and set out to rescue their chief. But they decided the tiny craft on the water was a space patrol weapon and so fired upon it. In attempting to drive off the atmosphere ship, Buzz and Happy were fired upon by Baccarati's men. With a hole in the hull of their spaceship, Buzz and Happy are now circling helplessly over the great sea. A torpedo tore out a starboard rocket control, Happy. We're losing altitude. If that atmosphere ship comes back, I'll sure let them have it. Our space weapons are still in order. Apparently, they're glad to be out of the fight, Hap. They know that was a lucky hit. We're just going in circles. We're trying to set it down on the beach. With the side push of the rockets, what's to keep us from swerving out into the sea? I'll spiral down till we're on course parallel with the shore, then cut rockets. And ease her down with the repeller ring. Right. If I can groove her down to that long stretch of beach, it might work. This will have to be the last spiral, Hap. One more circle over the land and we'll hit those cliffs back of the beach. Yeah, you were right about that atmosphere ship, sir. It's not coming back. Stand by repeller, ray. Standing by, sir. When I cut rockets, we should continue on a straight course. Here we go, Hap. Full repeller, ray. Going awfully fast for a landing, sir. I know it have. I've counted the repeller ray forward to give us some braking action. It's working, sir. We're slowing down. Oh. Nice going, Commander. I'd hate to have to do it again. And if the space phone works, we can call Pluto a space patrol and let them know we're here. At the same time, let Baccarati's men in on the secret? Uh, they could get here quicker than our ships could. Yeah, that's right. We wouldn't stand a chance. Let's take a look at the damage, huh? Yes, sir. Hey, that's some hole. Yes, but we were lucky. The torpedo hit us a glancing blow and didn't explode on contact. It sounded like it did. It was a couple of thousand yards behind us when it blew up. Well, this is going to be a job. But I think we can handle it. Let's get to work. Far out from the beach, a metallic object lurks just beneath the surface of the sea. Then, cautiously, a transparent dome rises a few inches out of the water. Carefully, Prince Baccarati scans the sky and then turns toward the beach. Hold it, Malangro. Keep it just as it is. Yes, Your Highness. Corey has landed on the beach. Is there ship damage, sire? It uh, doesn't appear to be. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's a hole in the hull. Why the gash? Otherwise, it seems to be all right. There's Corey. He's trying to repair the damage. It's going to take him some time, by the looks of it. Well, we'll wait till they're just about finished. Then go ashore and surprise them. Excellent, Your Highness. But suppose Corey's ship is too badly damaged to blast off. There'll be at least one workable space phone transmitter aboard. We can call the castle for help. All right, Malengo. Submerge. And make for the inlet on the other side of those rocks. Its motors purring, the sleek craft moves underwater and then turns into the inlet. The dome breaks the surface as the tiny sub moves toward the shore. A gentle grinding sound tells Baccarati and Malengro that their craft is in shallow water. All right, Malengro, cut off the power. Yes, Your Highness. Now open the hatch. Do you know how to do it? I think so, Excellency. We'll have to wait ashore, Malengo. See that your weapons don't get wet. Yes, sir. I think this is the hatch release. I'm getting it, sir. There. All right. Boost me up, Malengo. Yes, Your Highness. All right. Now, come on, hurry. Coming, Your Excellency. Arms held above their heads to protect their weapons, Malengro and Baccarati wade ashore, hidden from the spaceship by large rocks. But their movements are not entirely unobserved. Four pairs of eyes are on them as they emerge onto the beach. Four pairs of eyes attached to a single barrel-shaped head. The head rises up from the quiet waters of the inlet several hundred yards offshore. Supported by huge coils, the head rises farther out of the water and a ripple of excitement passes down a gigantic body. 
Then the head is lowered until only the eyes are above the surface, and the monster moves silently toward the beach. Meantime, Commander Corey applies an atomo torch to the outer skin of the spaceship's hull. I think that does it, Happy. Yes, sir. Rough job, but it'll have to do. It didn't take as long as I thought, sir. I just hope we've got all those wires connected. We'll get back in the ship and make a final test before we try to blast off. Yes, sir. Take the torch, will you, Happy? Thanks. Hold it, Happy. Tender examined the hull of the ship. Yes, sir. I thought I saw something move down the beach toward those big rocks. Oh? It might have been a large seabird, and then again it might not. I got a glimpse out of the corner of my eye, sir. There is something moving. Uh huh. It's a man falling along the sand. Baccarat. Yes. And the lingo's right behind him. What do we do? Rush him? No. Pretend you don't notice anything. Be very interested in the ship's hull. Then casually get into the ship as though you're going after more tools. You want me to bring out a ray gun? Yeah. Keep them hidden, though. You wait for them to rush us and then let them have it. Yes, sir. Smoking rockets. Are they coming? Well, no, sir, but I just saw something else. Maybe I'm space happy. One of those big rocks is moving. If we weren't on planet X, I think I was having a hallucination. What is it, sir? There's no name for it. Centuries ago, on planet Earth, it would have been called a sea monster. But it's on land. At least part of it is. All it sounds, it's moving very quietly. Commander, it's after Baccarati and Malingo. We'd better warn them. Wait. We don't know how fast that thing can move. Any noise or sudden motion might make an attack right now. Get into the ship, Happen. Bring a couple of blast guns. Yes, sir. The moon slowly happens. hundred feet more and we can rush them. Corey's there alone now. Keep your head down. Just keep crawling. Keep low. What's that? Your Highness, it's a monster. It's after us. Run, but I know. Right between the rocks. Run for the rocks. Help. Corey, help. Hurry, Happy, get those blast guns. Coming, Commander. It's attacking them. They've hidden between those rocks. Smoking rockets. Hey, give me a gun, Happy. Here you are, sir. Help! Help! If they're still alive. Monster can't reach them. Oh, if it had raised its head, I could blast. Hold it, Happy. You might hit Baccarati and Malengro. Got to get closer. Come on. Commander, it's trying to pull the rocks apart with its claws. Can't waste any shots on this thing, Happy. I'm going in close and divert its attention. Well, be careful, Commander. When it moves toward me, we'll both fire. done for, sir. Took a lot of doing. All right, Baccarati, you can come out now. Oh, Commander. What a dreadful creature. It nearly had us. Commander, you saved our lives. Uh, yes, Commander. I'm very grateful. Why, those awful jaws came that close to me. Malengro and I were just going to surrender when that monster charged us. Cut it, Baccarati. We saw you trying to sneak up on us. Now, come on into the ship. Yes, Commander. Uh, of course. <sighs> Wow, I, I thought we'd never finish that thing, sir. I emptied my blaster. Better collect our weapons, Hap. Right. No, you don't, cadet. Stand right where you are, both of you. Commander. I warn you, cadet, don't move. Your Highness. Don't be frightened, Malengro. Corey and the cadet are helpless. Then they empty their blast guns into the monster. Sorry, Commander. I had to open my big mouth. Just keep your hands up, both of you. All right, Dr. Ronnie. What are you going to do with us? Take us to your castle? Oh, no. I'm going to leave you here. Your Highness... They did save our lives. Shut up, Marango. I know what I'm doing. After all, they do have an even chance for survival. You ungrateful coward. You mean you'd leave us here on this beach, miles from any settlement? It's all right, Hap. We don't ask favors of space rats. If you get hungry, you can eat. There is plenty right over there where you're sitting. Yes, Baccarati. We could eat sand. 
In fact, you said a mouthful. I get my eyes. Get the lingo, Happy. Yes, sir. I'll take that ray gun, Bacarotti. Uh, Commander. Honestly, I never would have left you here. I was just joking. To that. You believe me, don't you? Oh, sure, sure. And that sea monster wasn't serious either. He just wanted to play. Yeah. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. Cadet Happy speaking. Listen, I got something important to tell you. If you haven't already entered the Name the Planet contest, you're missing out on the biggest chance you ever had. A chance to win a gigantic rocket clubhouse and $1,500. And you're missing 750 chances to win a Schwinn bike. So take off for your Weatherbird shoe store and get your free coin album and contest entry blank. And then zoom over and get some good hot Ralston. Remember, see your Weatherbird shoe man and see your grocer for hot Ralston. And hurry up. Do it now. <laughs> And now, a preview of next week's exciting space football adventure. Cadet Happy is approaching a small fortress in a jungle clearing on Planet X, where Commander Corey is being held captive by Prince Baccarati and Dr. Malenko. Baccarati glances through the gun port. Ah, we got company. The fool, the little fool. What are you talking about, Baccarati? Coming across the clearing from the jungle. It's a space patrolman. You're a cadet. Happy. Watch, Corey Malengo. I'll take care of the cadet with this blast gun. Baccarati, don't. Look, Corey. See what happens to those who defy the will of Prince Baccarati? Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Revolt of the Space Rats, when Instant Wilson and Regular Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Dick Fields, Virginia Hewitt, and Tom McKee. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present the new exciting... Space Patrol! This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles, reporting on a plane that can fly a thousand miles without refueling, the North American FJ-2 Fury. In a moment, we'll hear from the well-known test pilot on this Navy jet fighter, J. Ray Donahue, Jr. The Fury is a carrier-based plane armed with four 20-millimeter cannons. It flies 650 miles per hour, has an altitude mark of 45,000 feet. Its length, 37 feet. Now, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. To fly at supersonic speeds, a test pilot must have plenty of energy. That's why I always get a good night's sleep and start the day off with a good breakfast cereal like rice checks or wheat checks. They have plenty of energy, and they taste mighty fine. And I know that you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from J. Ray Donahue, Jr., Bob Love, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>